<laughs> hey, Pokemon Masters, Birdkeeper Toby here, and uh, there are well over 150 different species of Pokemon. In fact, there's now over 800. And while we all wish that Pokemon could be real and that they would exist here in the real world, well, there's some that might make you want to be careful what you wish for. Welcome to a new segment, Pokemon that you wouldn't want to be real. And today's video, of course, is going to cover the horrific Pokemon, Necrozma. Necrozma, in fact, is one of the latest Pokemon. It is Pokemon number 800. It is the Prism Pokemon and the mascot of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. You'd think for a Pokemon that they put on the box of the game, it would be a fun and wonderful Pokemon uh, filled with magical potential. But Necrozma is depicted in these games as being evil, and it's not hard to see why. It is known for absorbing the light of the sun and the moon, or the sun and the moon emissary, Solgaleo Lunala. But it seems like it actually does eat suns and moons as well. For example, in the game, you uh, traverse an area called Ultra Megalopolis, a city where there is no light, there is no sun. The only light is artificial, made by humans. And it would have to be in a world where there was no sun, but surely a world where there was no sun or moon, a world where the Krosma had eaten those things, this world, would be far more doomed than just our lighting situation. Let's start with the moon. If Necrozma existed and ate our moon, the Earth would immediately start spinning a little bit faster. The moon's orbit around the Earth actually slows down its rotation, and while there, it, it wouldn't be a lot, it would be enough to cause severe storms. The tides, of course, would be messed up being controlled by the moon. The moon, now gone from the night sky, would make nights pretty, uh, pretty dark. The moon is essentially a big nighttime mirror reflecting the light back at us, and on a social kind of level, the moon is also the only other, uh, only other thing, one of our neighbors that we've managed to visit. Suddenly, the human race would feel a lot more trapped and alone in the dark. We'd feel that big leap for mankind that was had been taken away, and that we had been pushed back down onto our planet never to escape. And what we'd be trying to escape from are radical shifts in the tide, the sea, the gravity that the, the, the moon exerts onto the earth. The tides would be a lot smaller, but a lot of that water, water would rush inwards, destroying ecosystems, shorelines. So many cities now underwater, people being misplaced and mishomed. We'd also wobble on our axis a lot, lot more, meaning our, our, our seasons would be even more drastic, going from freezing, freezing cold to blisteringly hot, unhabitable. And of course, nocturnal predators and prey, things that come out at night and rely on that moonlight to see, would have their vision massively screwed up. There would be lots of uh, night predators that would probably go extinct pretty quickly. It's a shame, because I think Rowlet's really cute. Now, I know what you're saying, but Necrozma only eats the light of those things. So maybe the moon really is up there in the sky in Ultra Megalopolis. It's just not being reflected by sunlight. But the sun is a big ball of plasma that produces light. It couldn't really be there without the light. If Necrozma's coming to this world in the same way it was to Ultra Megalopolis, then the night sky would be, uh, well, not totally pitch black. We'd be able to see the other stars actually a lot more clearly, but that would be a uh, little consolation. The light of our star of Sol would be gone, and with it, the heat that it produces. Because the sun is eight light minutes away, it would take us eight minutes to work out that anything had even gone wrong and then the planet would start cooling. Not enough as some people might think, we wouldn't just turn into a massive ice ball. The planet still has a core of molten lava. There are ecosystems that would survive, just probably not ours. Within a week, the planet would cool to zero degrees Celsius. Well, oxygen would be less because photosynthesis isn't happening anymore. There's no sunlight for plants to, pro to, to, to take in. They're not producing the oxygen, but we would have enough oxygen between us and the other animals and the other, the other remaining things to be able to uh, kind of live for at least a little while. Of course, a lot of those things are gonna die out because that temperature is too radical a change. That quickly, those ecosystems are gonna fall into disrepair. And in fact, our livestock, our agriculture, it's all gonna disappear. In fact, we probably wouldn't want to create a city like Ultra Megalopolis. One, you don't want to be living through this apocalypse. And number two, going up is a bad idea. That's where it's colder. You want to get as close to the core of the planet as possible. Going underground might be a good option. Maybe they'd have Fallout-style vaults you could hide in. Or better yet, going to areas that are geothermal, like Yellowstone. That might be able to save us for a little bit, but not everyone can go there. The human race would begin to diminish. Without the human race covering most of the planet, a lot of our stone and metal structures would begin to corrode and dissolve. The Eiffel Tower would eventually fall apart. 
all it would take is time and nature would reclaim this planet. After the sun began to disappear, slowly we'd start seeing the other planets in our night sky disappear as well, as the light that was reaching them, reflecting off them, is fading away. We would rely entirely on the light of other stars to be able to see, but like I say, we're probably going underground and trying to rely on some form of power to produce light and heat for us. Within a year, you're looking at a global temperature of minus 71 degrees Celsius, but something even more incredible would be happening. We would also lose the orbit of the sun. With no sun, we would just begin flying in a, in a straight line. So we would just become this starship, like hurtling it through space at an incredible speed. The water, of course, would become a layer of ice, a thick layer of ice, but there would still be liquid water underneath. Like I say, we have a molten core. And there are many creatures in the depths, in the abysses that have lived without sunlight. They don't even know that the sun's there now. Those microbes and small fish, those creatures, they would do fine. Of course, without a lack of sunlight and living underground, we wouldn't do so well. We would be lacking uh, vitamin D. Our skin would turn pale like the Ultra 3 Con Squad, but we'd also be suffering from chronic illnesses poor bone health, diabetes, we would be very depressed. Seriously, sunlight has been linked with mood swings. There are lots of people that get seasonal depression when the sky is a little bit darker. Well, when it's completely dark, the human race is gonna be a little bit bummed out, especially because we probably don't have any power now to power our Pokemon games. But like I say, microbes would exist, and maybe, maybe the human race could exist somewhere underground and we wouldn't die Pokemonless. <laughs> Maybe in thousands or millions of years with our starship, our Earth, traveling through space. There's nothing to say, depending on the direction, depending on the speed, that we wouldn't end up in the solar system, in the orbit of another star. The planet could heat up, the ice would melt, the creatures, the microbes, they would start to uh, rejuvenate the planet above. And us humans, maybe, if we manage to survive that long, maybe there's a chance for us. That is, of course, until Necrozma eats that star as well. Let's be glad, uh, maybe that Pokemon isn't real. And with that said, so high Pokemon Masters. Now more than ever, a special thank you to my Patreons of the month, the people who support this channel and keep it going. In particular, I have to give a massive shout out to Domino Thief and Andros Lee Fay who have gone above and beyond to help out the channel. Links to below as to where you can become a Patreon today.